going on everyone welcome to another episode of creating daily the best live stream show podcast on, on the planet according to me uh but i'm excited i'm here today in the studio hanging out got my green screen going on so for people watching who who are like what is going on is that real no it's not real i know it just looks really good not really but anyway i'm having a lot of fun coming to you live from wilmington north carolina so i'm super stoked about that it's july 7th it's hot as crap outside and uh and i know it's hot where my guest kevin Lowe, that i'm going to bring on in just a few minutes i know it's hot where he's at because he's further south um super excited to bring him on i was actually with him yesterday we were recording an episode for his podcast so we just got to spend we're gonna spend a lot of time together this week which is pretty amazing um so i'm excited about that and we're gonna talk about how do you go into change fearlessly that's just something that I know a lot of people are afraid of, maybe they're uncomfortable with, like, how do I change? And especially as a content creator, sometimes you just got to change the game. Like, you got to go do something else. Or, you know, as an entrepreneur or a business owner, uh, you got to just you got to take the old horse behind the barn, shoot it in the head, and move on. Uh, so Kevin has done that a couple of times, big times in life that I know about. Uh, and we're going to jump into those stories and, and hear a little bit about his creator journey, a little bit about his life. But before we jump into it, I need you to do me a couple of favors. One, wherever you're watching at, I need you to go ahead and hit that follow button or that subscribe button and drop me a little chat there and let me know you're watching. Say, hey, I'm watching, I'm here, um, and let me know about that. And then also head over to RitualMotion.com. And check out Ritual Motion. They are a new sponsor of the show. We've been collaborating and working behind the scenes for several months now. And I'm excited to go a level deeper with them. And they are they're a unique company. They're a live streaming platform that kind of is in the middle of like community, Web3, creator economy. They're right there. And they're working on some killer tools to help you and I as creators monetize um, and then also people who listen or watch our show, help them monetize, and then also help us interact. That's the community part of it, uh, which is pretty cool. So one of the one of the features on Ritual Motion is you can do a pre and post networking session with your audience. So the more people you get to come over there, hang out with you, similar to like Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces, they can join the stage, they can have that conversation, and then after the show. You can have an after show and have an after networking thing, similar to like Zoom breakout rooms, but it's all free. And you don't have to get someone, you don't have to get people to go somewhere else. You can have them stay there on Ritual Motion and just jump in the back room with you, uh, shake hands, have another drink, all that kind of fun stuff and network. So go check those guys out. And I might as well do one more shout out for them, right? They are the sponsor of the show. They are dropping BlockBot's NFT collection. I believe that's dropping today. I don't know if I get the confirmation email, but uh, I definitely got an email a couple weeks ago that said they were dropping it. So I'm going to say they're dropping it today. So go to BlockBot's.io. And if you're listening, that's B-L-O-C-K-B-O-T-Z.io. And you can go check out that if you're into the NFT space cryptocurrency, Web3, all that kind of fun stuff. And there's only going to be 5,000 of them, 5,000 of them. So go check that out. All right. Now, I don't have any more segments today. Typically, I do. Um, changing up creating daily a little bit. But today, I really wanted to spend more time with Kevin because he has a fascinating story. Super great guy. Super great personality. 
And like I said, I got to spend a lot of time with him yesterday. Now, he's not on camera today. Once again, to be a guest on the show, being on camera is optional. And we've had several people not want to be on camera. Or, or maybe they just don't have the setup to be on camera. But I do have a really cool screenshot of Kevin. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce my friend, Kevin Lowe. What's going on, Kevin? How's it going, man? <laughs> What's happening, dude? Super excited to be here. Yeah, man. I'm excited to have you, dude. Like I said, you and I spent some time together yesterday and it was a lot, a lot of fun. So I really appreciate you having me on your show, which I know is going to drop in a couple, that episode is going to drop in a couple weeks. And I'm excited to have you here sharing your story, sharing your journey. Yeah, man. Well, I'm, I'm super excited to, uh, to hanging out with you this week, both yesterday and now today. And, uh, yeah, dude, it, it's pretty awesome. And, and I, I thank you for uh, not making me uh, show my my smiling face live on camera. So well, it might not be live, but it's <laughs> on the screen, man. It is on yes. the screen. I got a great picture of you up there with your podcast logo, uh, with your name, with your handle, so people can follow you at Kevin Low Coaching on Instagram. So we're hooking you up, man. We're giving you plenty of promotion for that podcast. <laughs> Sweet, dude. Sounds so, good, man. Yeah, all three and a half people that watch this show, Kevin, are going <laughs> to hang out with you. You're welcome, awesome, man. I'm yeah, I'm all about that half a person, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, then when you share my episode, we're gonna double each other's audience. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll create a hole. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, on on today's show, really the topic is about going into change without fear. Just kind of going into it, and I know. Um, from you know following you around the internet for the last couple of years that you know life has given you that I know of a couple of really big changes and the first one was when you were 17 years old you went into surgery being able to see the world around you you came out of surgery not being able to do that and so to kind of lead into and I know it's a similar to what I did yesterday on your show I kind of went the long story route and shared all the you know little nuances of my journey to being a creator I'd love to go through that same journey with you today as well yeah absolutely absolutely dude so so yeah so my journey of 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 getting to where I am today is is really this understanding and in kind of making my way in this new life you know as as Billy just you know uh gave you the synopsis, um, 17 years old, junior in high school, life's going great, had a big uh, four-wheel drive Ford F-150, forest green, big 38-inch super swampers, the dual flow master exhaust, uh, beautiful truck, Kevin, loved it. Did, did you did you have like that like swamp rider look where like the tail end was, was back and the front end was lifted? I don't know what that's called, but. No, 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 the okay. whole truck was lifted. Whole truck was lifted. It was it was six inch suspension lift, two inch body lift. Yeah, whole thing was it was a big old monster truck. And oh, uh sounds cool. Dude, yeah, I loved it. And so so life was going awesome until all of a sudden it wasn't. And that came with with the news from an MRI that I had a brain tumor. And oh, um, you know, we we thought that was the traumatic part. And we were assured by the doctors everything was going to be great. I'd be back to school in three, four weeks. No problem. My my biggest thing that I was the most upset about, well, two things. One was that the doctor told me I was not allowed to keep the tumor because I thought it would be cool to have it like in a jar, like kept <laughs> like, <laughs> and and they're like, no, 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 we, we, we don't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. So they don't and, let you, they don't let you keep it. Like it's yours. No, so they're just no, taking it and, out. Yeah, and I even named it. I named it Bob, Bob the tumor. <laughs> and and so like we 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 had like a going away Bob party, me and my whole family, <laughs> and and stuff. And so so I was upset about the fact that I didn't get to keep the tumor in a jar. And then, though, I was upset that he told me it was going to be six months before I'd be allowed to ride my uh, four-wheeler again. Mm. And so, 17 years old, I mean, that was a big deal. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so, anyways, went into surgery. It was the morning of October 28, 2003. And that was really the day that my, my life forever changed. Because I went into surgery. We had I had the tumor removed. It was removed successfully, which saved my life, um, but at a cost that no one expected, and that was that I came out of surgery to be left completely blind. 
So, so, so when you went into there, were, I mean, and maybe I'm getting off topic a little bit, but were they like, hey, this is this is pretty standard. Like we're 100 percent confident you're going to come out of here with your vision and everything. So when when we met with the surgeon the first day and in his office and we were going through everything and they have to give you all the risks associated. And, and it's, mm-hmm. you know, always like, I always joke like, you know, oh, we got like a 25% chance we might cut off your arm, even though we're messing with your head, you know? <laughs> well, well, the very last stat that they gave us, 1% possibility that you may become blind. Wow. 1%. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 1%. And, and I can tell you to this day when I've had all the follow-up, you know, appointments with the with the neurosurgeon, they'll tell you that everything's intact and he doesn't understand why I can't see, but I can't. And so that tumor though, the tumor was big. It, it, they compared it to the size of a plum. It had completely encased my pituitary gland, which your pituitary controls all your body's hormones, like growth hormone, testosterone, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. That's why I was only five foot three at 17 years old. I wasn't growing. And, um, And so it was also, though, in the crosshairs of my optic nerve. And so what we feel like happened is the optic nerve had actually begun tunneling blood through the tumor. And so when that tumor was removed, it kind of more or less cut off the blood supply to the optic nerve, causing it to atrophy mm-hmm. and it died. Um, so, so that was the big thing for me. And, and, and I always tell people when I say that I went blind, I say, Can, I, I always, you know, Let it be known that I went completely blind because come to find out when people say they're blind, there's actually a big degree of what that means. Because most people who are blind, the vast majority still see something. They have some type of light perception, like they see shadows or or something. Me, on the other hand, I went all the way, all the way to the dark side. And so so I came out with with absolutely nothing. Wow, man. Wow. So you, you, you went into surgery, 1% chance that you would lose your eyesight and you came out and, and wow, I'm, I'm just sitting here trying to process. Cause you know, I, I'm with you. I, I hear people say, Hey, I'm blind, but then, then they can see what I'm doing. You know, my grandmother was like, my great grandmother was like this. Like she was, she said she was blind, but then when I would like flip my brother off or something, she'd be like, "Hey, stop doing that!" And I'm like, like "You ain't blind. What are you talking about? How did you see that?" But she could see like peripheral vision was fine. It was just the, in yes. front of her was not good. And so, okay, so man, as a 17 year old, I mean, I imagine this was like, "Wow, what do I do?" Like, what was the emotions wrapped up in learning that you're never gonna yeah. see again? You know, for for a long time, dude, it, it was going through the motions because not only did I I become blind, I, I also lost my sense of smell at the same time. But I also just had all these crazy medical issues re- mm. related to the surgery, related to the fact that my pituitary gland was now you know totally not working, and so I ended up I ended up staying in the the pediatric ICU for two weeks in the hospital. I don't remember any of the time in that hospital after after rolling through the operating room doors. I don't remember anything until sometime wow. later on being back at home because I also suffered from short term memory loss for, for about uh, six months or so after surgery. I'd, I had short term memory loss, all these different medical complications. It was like literally nothing went right. Nothing went mm. like we thought it was. And so a lot of it, dude, it was just going through the motions. And, you know, remember, I was a junior in high school. And this was, you know, two months into my junior year, a month after my 17th birthday. And so that, you know, but this is what's kind of cool about with my story at this point is I was a kid who hated school. I mean, I'd rather be sick with the flu than have to go to school. And yet, for some reason, here this kid is who would rather skip school any day of the week. And yet, now I have a get out of school free card 
yet I didn't take it. Because for some reason, from the very beginning, my family said, I kept saying, I just want to be able to catch up with my schoolwork to still graduate with my class. Wow. And wow. so, and so I ended up, I did it. I literally, I never went back to school the rest of my junior year. Instead, I had, um, they called it hospital homebound. And so these were teachers who would come to my, my, my grandparents' house. And so my mom would drop me off with my Nana each morning um, before she'd go to work. And I'd stay at Nana's and, and, and I had teachers. I had a teacher who came who taught me all my school subjects. Another teacher who came who taught me stuff with like blindness, like how to read Braille, how to start using a talking computer. Mm. And then I had a third teacher who was teaching me mobility skills, how to use a cane, how to get around. And so I ultimately ended up catching up with my schoolwork. So the fact that I made it back to school for the start of my senior year. Wow. And wow. yeah. And so we only had, um, at that time we, we did like a block schedule. So it was like four, one and a half hour classes each day. And so I just went back to school my senior year for one class each morning. And then the rest I did at home. That way I could just try and be back to school, be part of senior year, quote unquote. And, um, Ultimately, dude, I walked across the stage in my high school graduation and graduated with my class, class of 2005. And what that showed me, which which I didn't realize it when it happened, but when I look back at it, I realize now that I believe, because I'll, I'll preface this statement by saying my faith is huge for me. And the only way that I've gotten through all of this and, and, and where I am today is because of my faith. Yeah. And I believe in all my heart that me graduating high school, having that drive to do so was God showing me right off the bat that you're still capable of doing great things in this life. Wow, man. I, I love this story, man. I mean, you know, obviously some for you, the the, the part of it, that's it's tough, man. It was tough. And yeah, and, and you and I are the same age, same, you know, graduated the same year. Um, yep. So I'm sitting here, you know, I'm just kind of reminiscing on like, wow, what would that have been like to to go through life and have to relearn everything? Because you don't think about that. You're like, oh, you lost your eyesight. OK, well, ne you know, what's next? Like, well, you got to go learn how to communicate. You got to go learn how to do yeah. life a lot different. And so, man, I'm kind of curious, you know, talking about content creation and media creation, you, you talked about using a different type of computer. So, eight, you know, what is this, 18, 19 years ago? What was technology like for the blind community back then? Was it good? Was it yeah. terrible? Or what was that like? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when, when, when it happened, you know, I mean, it was good then. Now, of course, it's gotten a lot better. But you know, I mean, I was I was lucky in the fact that even when I went blind, you know, gotcha, like I said, almost 19 years ago, they they had these programs, these talking software programs called JAWS that installs on a on a Microsoft computer. And so I started learning how to to do that. And and I learned how to read Braille, but Braille, you know, I didn't use it. And so don't use it, you forget it. And that was because technology was was already a big, big part of, of my life. Now, what's cool is seeing the evolution of technology from when I went blind to today, where, you know, especially with the evolution of the iPhone, because starting with the iPhone, it was like the 3GS, it came out with voiceover, which is Apple's built in accessibility program which makes any of their, their iPhones, iPads, even their, their Mac computers completely accessible to the blind. Wow. And, and so, like, dude, it's absolutely phenomenal. Like, my iPhone that I have now, literally as I am running my finger across the glass screen, the voice is reading to me, like, the apps that I'm crossing over. So I have a voice, and, and, I, and I have it set up to like the male Siri voice. And so he's telling me, you know, oh, messages, uh, calendar, you know, and, and then instead of like me, instead of like where somebody else would just tap the screen to open an icon, 
Instead, I just say double tap it. And because I tap it once, it tells me what it is. Tap it again, it opens it. Oh, you gotcha. know, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. really phenomenal. Yeah. Man, this is this is awesome, Kevin. I really appreciate you sharing, you know, some of your story here. And so you're so you're 17. You're learning a new way to communicate. You're learning a new way to um, to do everything. To learn, to read, to you know, I mean, have stuff read to you through these different types of softwares. Um, so kind of walk me through like, okay, you graduated, which is amazing. Then what was, where, where did Kevin go next before he got into where you're at now? Yeah. So, so a lot of time was spent just, um, just, just trying to, to live, just going through the day to day stuff. Um, I tried going to, to our community college. Um, and you know, as I said earlier, Kevin wasn't a fan of school to begin with even when he could see and it was easy. Now, Kevin can't see, it's more difficult. Now I'm at a community college and you know they, they set me up with aides who are there to be like note takers in the class with me. Well, the note takers wouldn't show up or the note takers were like total scumbags and, and it, it was like ridiculous. And so needless to say, um, I finally was like, you know what? college ain't for Kevin. And so I'm like, let's stop doing that route. And instead, um, you know, I just kept, you know, like I said, a, a lot of time passed and, you know, man, the, the counselors, um, luckily, luckily enough where we live, um, literally. So I live in Ormond beach, the near nearby town of Daytona beach, which is literally like just connected to one another has a huge blind population. Cause it has, blind services it has like i think the the world's largest braille book library and talking book library and all these services that i never even knew existed and then all of a sudden i go blind and find out that we have all of this here and um and so you know the counselors there that we had you know of course you know they they felt like kevin wasn't progressing you know as fast as he needed to because kevin they would tell my parents, you know, well, Kevin, you know, he just needs to accept it and he needs to move on. And, and you know, and, and no, 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 no. And, and we, he needs to learn how to do laundry and cook. And, 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 and meanwhile, I'm like, whoa, 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 none of my friends are doing any of that. Why all of a sudden, because I'm blind, do I now need to start cooking and doing laundry? <laughs> like, what the heck? Like, and I'm like, you know, and stuff. And so it definitely took like my own timeline of, mm -hmm. of, really getting through life and the big thing came for me um gosh probably in like 20 probably like 2011 i guess i would say so so about like six years later i ended up doing a program through one of the blind service services that set me up with internships at local businesses and so two place things that i was super interested in one was travel. So I interned at a local travel agency. And the other, ironically, was I was super into like wanting to be on radio. And so they got me an internship with the uh, local AM radio station where I went there Monday, I think Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. I worked on the morning drive show and it was an AM political like talk show. And, and so I did these internships you know, at the same time of, of one another. So I'd, I'd work at the, uh, the radio station in the mornings and in the afternoons, I would go down to this travel agency and, and, you know, learn that whole industry. And I loved radio. Oh my gosh, dude. I was like, Oh, I love it. But they didn't have anything for me at the end of the internship. So mm. it was kind of back to square one, the travel agency, that internship ended, they weren't in a place to hire anybody. And so I was kind of just back at square one and just like, okay, now what? And luckily at that point, I found out about this whole thing of, okay, well, you can create your own travel agency called a home-based travel agency. And so that's what I did. So in 2013, um, I launched my own business called Better Days Travel. And so that was January 2013 that I started my own own business, wow. and I, dude, I operated that for the next seven years, dude. booking amazing vacations. Yeah, 
Dude, I, you know, first of all, I want to jump back into uh, just saying I love that even in those programs when the counselor is like, well, Kevin, you're not doing what you need to. You need to do all this. One, I love it that at such a young age you recognize, like, man, I'm still I'm still young. I'm still a kid. Like, why am I having to, you know, prog- <laughs> like do all these things because I'm my situation? So I, I love it that you push back on that and put it on your own timeline. I think a lot of times is – as people, definitely as uh, content creators, definitely as entrepreneurs, definitely as employees, I mean, as people in general, we're typically looking at the people around us or, you know, seeing what's going on and going, okay, where, where am I at? And we're always comparing ourselves. And I just love it, man, that you're like, nope, I'm going to do this on my timeline. I'm going to figure this out. And then, um, yeah, fast forward to 2013. I love it, dude, that you went from the guy who people said, Hey, you're a you're a slacker. You need—I mean, not slacker, but you know what? Whatever, whatever they say, yeah, like you need yeah, to be, yeah, yeah. You need to be going faster. To now, you're like, dude, check this out. I own my own travel agency, so I love that story, man. I love it, dude. You got me, you yeah. got me hooked. I'm on the edge of my chair. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and you know, and, and even like the travel agency thing is is you know, Kevin's never been one to like just kind of do what like you're supposed to do and and what society tells you to do, and so like even that, like you know, like. It, it wasn't nobody at blind services like recommended like oh be a travel agent no i'm like i love to travel and so so i started a travel agency thing and and even to be honest like i i feel like the travel agency that i interned at even though they were absolutely incredible i don't feel like they even thought like i could really do it mm, you know wow and, and stuff and so i'm like heck yeah i can do it I got the technology to do it on the computer. And so, dude, I started, yeah, started the travel agency. And that was amazing. Like I said, for seven years, from 2013, I did the travel agency thing. And, but, you know, and, and I mean, booking vacations from, I did a bunch, of, I did a lot of honeymoons to different, like all inclusive resorts. I did, I did some awesome trips for people, like going, to, like I had this one couple. They wanted, they couldn't decide Costa Rica or the Florida Keys. They lived in Colorado. So they're like, well, we're going to do both. I'm like, you're going to do, they're like two different places. They're like, yeah, we want to do both. <laughs> so like, I literally like did a trip from, they did a week in Costa Rica, then flew them over to Florida, had them a rental car. And they, they, they did a week in the Florida Keys. And, wow. um, wow. you know, and so the, the whole travel business was awesome. Now during that time though, I mean, it wasn't like my business ever like took off like as good as I like wanted it to. And so so there were different times when I actually went and kind of worked with some other companies, um, other travel agents who were doing really good. And then I'd come back to doing my own thing because it, it wouldn't work out with them and and stuff until coming into 2020, I was set to have my best year on record. I literally had some incredible trips booked, many awesome honeymoons. I then even had a uh, trip lined up for, I think it ended up being close to 40 of us were booked for October of 2020 on a group cruise that I called uh, Redefining Vision in 2020, because this was going to be the 17th anniversary of when I went blind, which I thought was super cool wow, happened to be cool. in the, in the year 2020. And what was significant about that is it meant that, that at that point I had been blind as long as I had been able to see. And so I had all this awesome stuff going for me. And then we all know 2020 happened and the world collapsed. And within a week's time there in March, I went from the best year on record to a travel agency that basically didn't exist. Wow, man. Wow. So yeah. This, so, so this is where, and this is where we're talking about this change, man. Cause I think like, you know, I think as, as creators, sometimes we get this idea and we go, Oh, well, we, we want to do this show or we want to do, you know, whatever, like this podcast, this TikTok, this Instagram, this whatever, but we don't want to, you know, we don't want to change. We just want to keep grinding and trying to make it work. And I think that's one thing that you and I have in common. And I shared the story on your podcast w- episode, which will come out in a couple of weeks um, that will promote. So if you guys want to hear the story, but we have very similar stories where our businesses established businesses went away during the pandemic. And so, 
yeah, man, it's incredible. And if we weren't willing to change, and if we were trying to just hang on to that same thing, um, we would have probably just gotten our lunch eaten and would be working, you know, like you want extra large fries with that? Like, you know, <laughs> and not that there's anything wrong because I think fast food's paying a lot of money these days, but, you know, we would have probably been there doing something we <laughs> didn't love, you know? Exactly. So, so, exactly. Then, so take me into, so 2020, your business basically just like goes away, very similar to my story as well. So t- take me into like, how does that lead you into podcasting? Yeah. So, so at this point we're in quarantine mode and at this point I'm like, okay, travel agency, you know, is, is done. But I, at this point I hadn't given up on it. And, and so, but I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? We're in quarantine. Well, I'm like, you know what? perfect opportunity i'd been thinking about doing a youtube channel for a long time and so i'm like you know what this is perfect opportunity to explore this opportunity so i start going on amazon ordering all this stuff for doing a youtube channel and so i'm getting like the ring light and and the uh the tripod thing and then all of a sudden it just kind of like boom like slapped me in the face like reality check Kev, you're blind. You can't do this yourself. You're going to have to have somebody here helping to film you. And how, how's that going to work? That's going to be a pain in the neck. And so I'm like, oh Lord, all the, all this camera equipment and stuff. Yeah. Forget it. And so (laughs) it was at that time that I think it was my sister who was like, why don't you look at doing a podcast? Well, at the time, wow. I, di- I didn't even know what a podcast was. I didn't listen to any. And so I start listening to a podcast and, and, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and, and, I, and I'm, you know, understanding what a podcast is. And, and so now though, I'm getting excited. And so now I start listening to podcasts about how to start podcasts. And, and, and that's what started it. Now, when I started my podcast, it was called The Lowdown on Life and Travel. Because it was going to combine aspects of my life story, but also, again, I'm still at that point thinking it's still tying back to travel, thinking this is an awesome opportunity to drive attention to the travel agency. Mm. And and so that's how the podcast got started. And and so I, I, I started doing the podcast thing, and, dude, I fell in love with it. And And what was so cool was, I kept having people tell me, Kevin, like you are so good at this. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm really liking it. And so 2020 is going on. I, I mean, I think I launched my podcast in May of 2020. And, um, you know, as, as the year's going on and, and I'm realizing I'm liking it more and more, we're coming up to, to 2021. And I find myself at this point, like, I don't want to book any more trips. I'm like, I'm telling everybody. I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. I'm like, I feel like I'm onto something. And this is way better than canceling vacations. And so, <laughs> you know, it, 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 and my whole thing was, was I'm like, I didn't know where it was going to lead. And I didn't know how I was going to make it work. But I just knew that I found something that felt right. Because as, as much as I loved the world of travel, as much as I enjoyed being a travel agent, to be honest with you, I knew in my heart that wasn't what I was meant to be doing. I knew that there was something more for me. Because during this whole time, too, I started sharing my story. I started speaking at churches, at schools, sharing about how I went blind, how I overcame what happened to me. And... And so, you know, I really love doing that. But so, again, the whole travel thing, it, you know, it just, it wasn't really me until sometimes, though, in, in relating back to, you know, you listening to this is sometimes it, it's tough for us to make the choices. And so for me, the pandemic, to be honest, that aspect of the pandemic was a blessing because it forced the door to close and allowed me to explore a new door that opened. And and that was the podcast, which, you know, like I, you know, kind of catching back up where I left off going into 2021 at that point, I'm loving it. I'm realizing I don't want to just focus on travel content. 
And that's when I rebranded it again, not being afraid to make a change. I rebranded it into what it is now, the lowdown with Kevin Lowe. I, I explored a bunch of different names and everybody's like, dude, you got to go with the lowdown with Kevin Lowe. They're like, it just, it just flows. And so, so I did that and, and have just not looked back since. Dude, I, I love the story, man. I, and I think, you know, the, the part that I love the most is like the radio gig that you had early on. You're like, dude, this is yes. great, but there's no opportunity. And now it's like your world comes like, super full <laughs> circle and it's like oh now you can do a radio you know audio i'll say audio an audio yeah. you know show which you're which you are g- great at man first of all you know i listen to your show um i was a guest yesterday as you know in a recording for your show and um i even went home and told my wife i'm like man this guy kevin dude he is so dynamic like if there was some way that he and I could do a show, this one, this is the pitch right here that he and I could do a show together. Like I would love it. Cause we're very similar, very similar backgrounds and stories and same age and all that kind of stuff. And he's like dynamic on the microphone. And so, you know, man, I just, I just want to say congrats to you for, you know, finding that love of radio through podcasting or, or scratching that love, you know, itch or whatever through, through podcasting. And you are good at it, man. Like you are, killer at it so um look at and i get it dude with all the cameras and the lights and everything i'm like you know i mean i can see perfectly fine and i have so much trouble still trying to get stuff to do what i want it to so um i but but if you need help dude i'll fly to florida and we'll set something up for you if that's what if that's what it takes man if you want to get in the video world I don't want tech to stop you. I can come down there and help you out. So let me know. I'll book the flight or, or book the car trip. I should say that. I'm talking like I'm a millionaire. I'll let you book the flight. How's that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just just call it the private jet, you know, and, and we'll buzz on down here. Yeah. Hey, honey, sorry. I'm going to Kevin's for the weekend. Call the jet, please. Call the nanny for the kids. We're going on vacation. No, that's definitely not how it's happening. She's probably watching this like, no, what are you talking about booking a flight? Like, you're going to film it down there. Dude, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, oh man, that's too much. But oh, uh, man. but no, dude, thank you. And and you know, and and you know, man, it it it's you know a funny story about the whole world of video and, and versus audio. You know, because you know, you know, like the whole podcasting space has taken on, you know, where video is a big aspect. You know, true. And yeah. and I and I often joke, and 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 because sometimes I've had guests on my show who they'll get upset almost that we're not doing video. And, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, I'm like, first and foremost, you sighted people like to use your eyes way too much. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, have uh-huh. you ever, I'm like, have you ever been in the car listening to the radio and been like, oh my gosh, this just irritates me that I can't see them. I'm like, yeah, no, right. you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a weird <laughs> argument. But but then I always joke though with the people who if, if they try and give me any 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 smack about no video, I say, I said, listen, I said, think about it like this. I said, I'm sitting here in my studio. I like to stay cool. So the lights off. I said, you're on your end. I said, I can't see you, but you can see me sitting in this dark room with my lips up to a microphone. Doesn't that seem a little bit creepy? (laughs) 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 And and, and at that point, they're just, they are either speechless or they're just kind of like, uh yeah yeah we get it we get it <laughs> yeah, you know what you're right well dude and i mentioned because we you know we went um recorded for your show yesterday as i've mentioned several times and we just did video or audio only and it's not often even and i, I think i told you this like even when i am doing just an audio only podcast it's typically video as well because people are like well if you do video Uh, at least like a zoom call or ecamm or whatever then you can see each other you can kind of get those you know whatever like those physical cues or or whatnot or eyebrow raises or you know whatever you can kind of get into the conversation a little bit more or so people say but dude on the guest side yesterday when i was on your show to make an argument for audio only even in the recording process Dude, I was like super, super comfortable. I wasn't worried about what my hair looked like or if my hat was on right or wrong or what clothes I was wearing. I literally 
kicked up my feet on my desk, pulled my microphone close, leaned back in my chair, and we just talked for over an hour. And it was like an incredible conversation and probably, you know, maybe even overshared a little bit or shared stuff I wouldn't normally share if I was on camera and not, you know, not feeling super confident. So I definitely think there's an argument and, you know, your the quality of the show that you do and the, the amount of information that you get from guests and stories and things like that. I think that has a lot to do with your success as far as producing a podcast audio only for sure. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate and, and, and just to, to echo what you're saying, dude, I agree 100% in the fact that I have found it with so many of the interviews that I've done, the people will, will tell me they're like, wow, they just open up and, and, and they'll, they'll tell me though, like, they're like, you, you ask such questions that questions that no one else asks before. And they'll, and they'll even, I've even had some people say, they're like, you see parts of my story that no one else sees. And, Mm -hmm. and, and again, it lends its hand to this fact of eliminate, even for you sighted people, eliminate that focus on the sound of the voice, pay attention to that. And it eliminates, you know, whether we want to believe it or not, we form opinions in our, our mind as soon as we see the person. Instead, if you can eliminate that and just get down to what they're saying, I feel like it just makes a better story, a better interview. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, dude, I you know, I think people might look and, and say, oh, man, Kevin lost his eyesight. That's a That's a hindrance, but really it's a superpower because of what you just said. And I know in the music industry, people and producers will go into a sound booth to listen to playbacks, and everyone in there has their eyes closed. They're not focused on anything mm. but their ears and their listening and then they're tweaking stuff that way and then listening to the playback with their eyes closed. And so I think that that is a part of your success, man. And that's going to be a part of your continued success is, you know, you've taken this, what people would deem a, a hindrance or a disability and saying, well, you know, I might as well just sit around and do nothing because I'm, I'm not capable of, of figuring this out. And you've come up against every single thing and all these changes that were forced upon you You've taken them, you've grabbed them and said, okay, how can I make this work for me? And that's why I admire you so much, man. That's why I wanted to have you on the show because, you know, a sighted people, I love that you say that. It's so funny, man. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta take that. Like, I'm a sighted person. I, you know, it is, man. Like, sometimes we can be like, oh, dude, you know, life sucks. I can't figure this program out. I can't figure this software. I can't figure out these lights or this camera. And then I'm over here like, man, Kevin's figuring it out. Like, surely he can figure it out, you know? I got it. And same for me too, man. Like, okay, dude, if this guy's showing up every week recording. Dude, you record what, two or three podcasts a week or something? Yeah, yeah, yep, I do. Yeah, dude. And you're, I mean, you're hustling, you're communicating and you're doing all the things. And I was blowing you up with text messages late at night when you're supposed to be asleep because you wake up at 4 a.m. But, you know, like, only for you, only for you, man. I was only like, for unfortunately you. for you, Kevin, now we've become friends. And anybody that's my friend is like, oh, man, this guy likes to talk a lot. <laughs> I, my, 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 my only thought was, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? If he really irritates me, I'll just start responding when I get up at four. You know? <laughs> dude, that's an option. That's how, well, dude. Yeah. There, there was a point last night when we were swapping texts, and you're like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry, I gotta go. It's 9:30. I get up at four. <laughs> I was, I was about to be like, "Oh, dude, well, shoot me a text when you get up, because maybe it'll help me get up earlier." And then I, I deleted the text. I'm like, "Nope, not gonna do that. Like, Forget this. Don't, don't text me or call me at 4 a.m." <laughs> dude, that's so funny. So oh, funny. Man. Well, Kevin, yeah. is there anything that we didn't chat about, man? I know, um, you know, we've been on here for a little bit, not that I want to rush off, but, um, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground and I love your story and I love that you, you came and you shared it with, with myself and my audience. It's the first time I've heard your entire story. I've heard bits and pieces from different podcasts and different shows. Um, but I'm excited to, you know, see, to know Kevin a little bit more and then knowing that you've taken all the stuff that life has thrown at you You've put it all in a big ball and you're throwing it back at life and you're winning. And I love that. So is there any other things that you want to share that I didn't like really set you up or I'm not as good an interviewer as you. So I apologize, <laughs> but hopefully I've done a decent job at, at walking people through your story or helping you walk them through it. Yeah, no, man, this, this has absolutely been 
absolutely a blast. I, I've enjoyed it so much. And, you know, honestly, the, the only thing that I would, would leave with is, you know, since we're, we're talking to a lot of content creators, is use my story as an inspiration to incorporate what you've been through in life as content. So many times we're trying to come up with content, trying to come up with, with new ideas. Well, a lot of times it's the stuff we've already done in life. It's the stories that we have. Those are the content that is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's taking stories of when you were a kid, funny stuff, serious stuff, sad stuff, and turning that into content today. And I believe, you know, that's just such an, an amazing resource that I don't feel like enough people utilize. And so, so that's my one tip. My second tip is don't be afraid to make a change. If, if, it, if it's recording equipment, filming equipment, just get something. Cause we, we all get, we all get, especially in the tech space. We're all like, oh my gosh, I, which one do I choose? Do I choose this microphone or that microphone? Just choose the one microphone that's best in your budget that looks good and realize you can upgrade later. You can make yeah. a change later, dude. So that those are my my two big uh big pieces of advice, you know, for for somebody uh, listening to this. Oh, Kevin, that's great advice, man. I always tell people like, hey, start dirty, start messy, borrow equipment if you have to, like whatever gets you to the to the starting line to actually start, I guess, across the starting line. Um, don't worry about the finish line because it's never going to show up. Like it's never showing up. Like we're all in this for the long haul. And so I love that. that you just get what you can, get what's in your budget, get whatever you know, you're know you comfortable with, and then you can always upgrade later. That is good coaching, Kevin. And I want to, I want to <laughs> leave, I want to sit, that was my segue. That was a terrible segue, but that was my segue <laughs> to set you up to tell me about your new coaching business. Cause I know you're, you're a podcaster, you're doing that thing. You're working with sponsors. You're, you're monetizing that way. Um, but you've also started helping people. So take a couple minutes here and uh, and pitch us, man. Tell us about your new coaching gig. Yeah, dude, absolutely. So, so yeah, so I've started coaching two different aspects, kind of. Oh, I think I lost you there, man. Oh. As a life that, oh, are we there? Oh, yeah. Okay, now I got your back. Now I got your back. Am I here? Yep, I, I can hear okay. you. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so I work as a uh, transformational life and business coach. Basically, what that means is somebody who's gone through some stuff in life, and they're looking to make a change, but they're not sure how to do it, or they lack the confidence to do it. I step in to help people make that change, create the business, create the side hustle, but something that truly pulls on their passions and what what they've done, you know, we, we've, we've all had the, you know, the J-O-B, but what if we can use what we've been through, the messiness, and turn that in to the gifts that now we can use where we show up Monday morning just as excited as if it was Friday evening. And so I do that as a coach. And then I also, something new that I've started that I've been doing for free um, forever. And now though I'm actually starting is a consulting business for for companies, organizations that have websites or apps as a, a website accessibility consultant. And so that is, people don't realize the amount of people out there who are blind or visually impaired who use these screen reading programs like I talked about. And s programs, apps, websites, they have the ability to ma be made where they work better with this software. And so a lot of times it just takes some tweaking. And so I've started working, you know, as a consultant where people will hire me, companies to come in, review their websites, go over all the findings with them and help them, you know, be able to figure out what little edits they can make so that it's more accessible uh, to the blind and visually impaired. Man, that is so awesome, dude, on all levels. I love that you're coaching people in a business and and then I love I, I love even more that you're consulting businesses to create accessibility for the blind community, man. I think that is so powerful and super dope that you are taking that initiative and becoming that, you know, that voice for your industry, man, or that voice for your, for your, for your niche there. You know, I think that's a, an incredible uh, journey and incredible feat to take. So hopefully somebody listening to this, some company, some business out there uh, will call you Kevin and say, Hey man, come, come check our stuff out. Like, let us know 
what we can do to tweak it because it's a huge opportunity. I imagine there's a lot of people uh, utilizing websites that are, you know, have that are blind that can't see. So it's like this, it's a business opportunity. I mean, not to be weird or nothing, but it, that's what it is. And that's what you're trying to help them succeed at. So good on no. you, man. That's cool. Awesome, man. Exactly. Thank you, man. Awesome, man. Well, Kevin, I appreciate you, dude. I know this is not going to be your last time on the show. I'm already brainstorming right now as we're hanging out. I'm like, how can I get this guy on creating daily more often? Because I have so much fun. We have so much fun uh, chatting. So I really appreciate you, man. And so we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate you jumping in. I'm going to close this thing out, and then I'll, I'll see you in the, in the green room here in just a minute. All right, everybody, that is – it for creating daily today i'm super excited man go follow kevin um he is an incredible creator incredible guy super inspirational as you already know because you watched the show um and if you yeah if you don't think so then stop following me unsubscribe if you don't like my friend kevin then unsubscribe um so anyway but actually subscribe i know you haven't yet so go ahead and do that subscribe to the show let us know what you think about it and join me next week i got a very special guest coming on the show on tuesday I have uh, Melanie Risley from Ritual Motion. So she's going to be on. She's the VP of Strategy and Operation over there at Ritual Motion. And that's the new sponsor of the show. So come over there and support and ask her any questions about Ritual Motion. We'll talk about the NFT project that they're doing. We'll talk about all those fun things. And then next Thursday, a week from today, I'm going on a mahi fishing trip offshore, so I will not be, I think it's a mahi trip, I will not be going live, uh, but maybe I'll have somebody cover for me, maybe I'll have somebody go live for me, I don't know, we'll see, uh, but anyhow, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, if that's what you're doing, and go push the record button, go hit the go live button, don't be afraid to change, and be more like Kevin, alright, that's my new tagline for the end of the show, be more like Kevin, because uh, he's awesome, and he is, dude, he's doing it, and I love it, so we got, we'll see you guys next time.